call to order at 7.30 p.m. First item is our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first item is an adjustment to the agenda, and under item 10, new business, we will add E, a proposal for teacher planning for Pond Cove. Are there any other adjustments? Charlie, I'd like to add a brief report under committee reports for the Athletic Steering Committee. That will be item C. I'll do that when I get there. Okay. Um, also, under item 11, uh, we have two requests to go into executive session. The first will be for the purpose of discussing a teacher negotiations, which we will do. Then we may come out and take a, a vote. And then we will go back into executive session to meet with Claire Labrie relative to special education personnel issues. So it will be two executive sessions with the possible um, uh, formal call to uh, the meeting again in between. Okay, approval of the November school board meeting minutes and you should have had a revised copy. There were some additions that needed to be added and they have been added. The most important one was school board members present. We omitted our new school board member, and she was here. Mm -hmm. um, seeing no others, the minutes stand. Okay, uh, first will be comments by our high school representatives. Hi, Matt Martin, Jr., Cape Elizabeth High School. Ryan Moore, Jr. Um, since our last meeting, we've had two meetings as an SAC. We've been kind of broken up because of the Thanksgiving break. Um, in mid-November at our first meeting, uh, after our, our meeting, we presented our proposal for the academic eligibility to the subcommittee. And um, Mr. Sweeney said that that was, um, there was a, they had um, good input towards the subcommittee and their um, decision, which hasn't been made yet. But, um, and we also gave our proposal to, um, for the Walkman issue to Mr. Dawson. And after we submitted our proposals, we decided to have teacher meetings um, to, get, to allow the teachers to give input and to allow us to, t to explain to the teachers our proposals for these two um, policies. And there was mixed reaction for both. And um, however, we agreed that it need, that we need to do this more often with um, having the teachers give input to us. And we explained to the teachers. Um, and Mr. Dawson planned a meeting solely with the faculty um, on Monday, which he had. And he'll talk about, I believe. And um, so. Our Walkman issue is also is also with Mr. Dawson, and he's going to give that to the administration, and that's pretty much it for the policy. But as an SEC, we um, elected to have members that chose to to go to the Cape Coalition. That was also a priority for us, and we decided to improve that at the coalition meeting. We and the people that went there and came back to the meeting agreed that. Um, we need to improve the relationship with the police that are um, among the students, kind of like what we do with the school, what, what we're trying to do with the school board members. And uh, they gave us positive feedback from that meeting. One of the things we've tried to do as a SAC 
is uh, once again have school board member sh members uh, shadow the students. So far, I believe we've had two, um, two of you come into the high school, Mr. Ridge and Mr. Antwhistle. And uh, from the people we talked to, they all said it was a very positive experience. Went very well. And uh, I believe the other ones are in the works. Um, Mr. Sweeney has also made a very uh, good effort to come in. He's been at all our meetings. It's been, uh, I think it's helped out a lot. It's been very beneficial to us. He also came into um, our journalism class. Had a nice interview. And I think uh, as far as that SAC goals with the relationship between the school and the school board, it's going very, very well. Um, one of our, another goal besides the uh, communication for an SAC has been um, a service project that we put on hold until after Christmas. Um, but there is a Bruce Roberts uh, service project going on at the high school um, for Thanksgiving. Let's see, the juniors got their PSAT score back. Uh, reactions were pretty well, I guess. And uh, the research papers are going on. Big junior news. Um, the next thing the SAC is looking to do is be to uh, tackle student uh, involvement. So at our next meeting, that should be the uh, big report is what we've done on that. I think that's it. Nothing else to say. <laughs> There's any questions from the board? Having attended your the November policy subcommittee when you when your SAC representatives presented the um, proposed changes to the athletic policy, I have to commend the SAC for the quality and the um, the presentation itself. Again, congratulating you on your communications. Thank you very much. George? I'd, I'd echo uh, Charlie's sentiments. Um, I, I, I was very impressed with the presentation. Um, the, the, uh, those who represented uh, the school did so very well, and, and uh, the input um, uh, was, was very seriously uh, looked at and considered, and, and uh, you may see some significant influence from that input. Um, the other thing that you mentioned was the visits, and I just um, uh, wanted to uh, make a statement that my visit to the high school was very, um, very beneficial. It was um, a very positive experience, and, uh, and uh, I certainly appreciate that invitation. Madam Ryan, uh, do you have a room for tomorrow's SAC meeting yet? For tomorrow's? I haven't heard yet. Okay, six period starts when? I thought it was on Thursday, but it's Is it Thursday? Yeah. <clears throat> in any event, what time does six period start? So I can come in and harass you. Six period is on Thursday would be... It's uh, 8.30 on day. Thursday. And I suspect lecture hall. Okay. And the, my interview with you will not be published until after my death? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Nice job. <clears throat> Thank you, Mine. Mine and Matt. Thank you. And next, our middle school representative. Um, Sarah Nelson, eighth grade at Cape Elizabeth Middle School. Um, Chelsea couldn't be here tonight, so. Um, recently, we had, or last night, we had our um, seventh and eighth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade band concert. It was our winter concert, and there was also the chorus there. Um, Fifth and sixth graders this week are invited to the Oz Coffee House that's put on by the high schoolers, and that would be this Friday. And also our seventh and eighth grade dance is this Friday. Um, the girls' basketball starts on January 12th, and that's after vacation. And the boys is still going on right now, and they have good records from what I've seen of it. Um, indoor track starts February 2nd. Swimming also starts February 2nd. This week, drama tryouts are going on from grade, with grades five through eight. Um, the speaking and singing auditions are this week. And the crew auditions, I guess, are um, next week. Fifth grade elections are going on in a week. And um, in sixth grade, there's been a geography bee. And from our Chiwanki gift sale, um, the sixth grade earned $24,600 for um, Chiwanki. And there's, um, their math computation test is coming up in early January. Um, 
The sweatshirt sale clothes are coming in, and we made quite a bit of money on those. Um, report cards came out last week. Um, a lot of all our lost and found items will be taken to Goodwill on December 22nd. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of the um, advisory classes from various grades are having bake sales and they're donating their money to needy families and other charitable causes. Um, Mr. Roberts, Ms., um, the eighth grade um, Mrs. Roberts class and Ms. Mishu's class have recently finished Junior Achievement, which is our economics program. And a lot of um, the other classes are starting those soon. Um, our eighth grade just recently had a geography bee, and the semifinals are this week, I think. Um, the Nordic Ski Team Club has started, and there's about 12 people in that. And that's about it. <laughs> any questions? Is there any questions? Oh, and the shadowing, with the teacher shadowing us, we've had some responses, and the student council says they're going to get back to those people about that shortly. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have. There was a request I meant to say at the beginning of the meeting. Um, the control room would, would like us not to to leave our microphones in the positions of talking. It does something with the transmission and. Okay, thank you. I meant to tell you that before the meeting. Um, next is communications. I have none. Keith? I just wanted to congratulate the middle school uh, music program last night. It was quite a program. Uh, I think it was the first time we've seen the bands split up. So now there is a sixth grade band, a seventh grade band, and an eighth grade band. And uh, based on the numbers, I think they look like there's probably about 70 or so per band. Uh, that's terrific. That really uh, indicates the health. And uh, congratulations to Mr. Boffa and Ms. Lee uh, for their great course uh, concert as well. Any other communication? Keith? Just a quick one. I'd like to congratulate the varsity ice hockey team for winning their home opener over Libson 5 to 4. Nice job. <coughs> okay, we move on to the superintendent's report and a technology coordinator's report. Usually we do this at the November meeting, but we were very busy at the November meeting, so we bumped Gary until tonight, but he's here to give you his report. And this is Gary's first year in the job, and we're keeping him very busy. He has two tasks for every one block of time. I did uh, put together a report for you, and I'd like to go over some of the things that are in that and add some additional information, and then please you know, try to answer any questions that you have. Uh, I'd like to start by saying that um, first week of the school year, I was in the classroom, uh, spent in the classroom. The second week I spent, fortunately, with Jay before he left. We had one week together to try to learn this job. Um, I did gain a lot from him, and I still keep in contact with him. Uh, email, question, email is great. I can get an answer to a question that, uh, that I need to very, very quickly. Um, that first week after Jay left, when I was all by myself, uh, what I needed to do was to get a feel for what needed to be done. We did have an exit interview, and the message that, uh, or one of the messages I, I heard in that exit interview was to try to get the rest of the classrooms connected as, as soon as possible. So I needed to find out what that meant. And when I went around to the classrooms and, and took a look, um, I found that for various reasons, we had uh, approximately five classrooms connected in Pond Cove, about 24 in the middle school, about 26 at the high school. Um, so that left still quite a bit more to do. And for various reasons, things didn't get all done over the summer because of misordering of parts and because community services uses a lot of our, our labs through the course of the summer. 
Jay didn't realize that, and really he only had the, the month of August to do a lot of this work. Um, as of right now, we probably have maybe a half a dozen or so connections left in each building, so it, it's, been a, it's been a long haul. Uh, I've learned the job by the seat of my pants and, and made, made some mistakes and found out what I was doing wrong and found, found out how to get things connected. But the work list and getting people online was a priority. Um, and now I think we're very, very close. If I take a look at the components of the plan, and I'll just address each one of those, the uh, steering committee, we've met a couple of times already this fall, and we're actually going to meet again tomorrow uh, for our third time. Uh, I've given you uh, minutes of those meetings, and you see see what, what happens in those, uh, those agendas. We talk about various things. We're in the, the budget preparation process. I've met with uh, school level department heads and team leaders, and we're in the process of building the, the te system-wide technology budget. We've recruited several new members. Uh, we have Mr. Jewett on our technology committee now, a couple of uh, seniors at the high school, Wyatt Jackson and Dan Brakely, and we, um, Wendy Derzewick, our new computer lab assistant at Pond Cove, is on the committee. We have had community members all along, uh, uh, Michael McGovern, Jay Shermer, generally attend the meetings regularly. So we've got some community connections in there too. And the broad goal of overseeing a technology plan generally happens at that meeting and we report out as to where we are. The networking. Um, accessing by email in the classrooms by way of the network is, is almost there. Um, my goal was to try to get email set up first and then go back and, and get the internet access in the classrooms. And we're getting close so that probably after the, the Christmas break, I can, I can go back and start doing some of this internet stuff. Uh, we have a grant to network the superintendent's office. I have, have some monies there. And with a combination of some of the things we're doing with the, with the town, we may be able to use another service. We're currently using the main state library network in each one of our buildings. And that's a 56K connection. Uh, we can possibly take advantage of Time Warner cable modems. We have those in each one of our buildings as well, currently not being used uh, because we don't have the connections and the software and hardware in place, but that could increase our speed. Uh, in most cases, the internet access is adequate, but it, it depends on the time of the day, just like with anything else. Uh, one of our labs has some partic particular problems. The high school PC lab is having some some speed problems and, and connection problems accessing the internet. And we're hoping the time order might solve that. <clears throat> Things that are happening now by email, notices of, of minutes and meetings are now being sent out email instead of paper copies. If people want paper copies, they can print them out. But electronically, things are happening. <coughs> I think there's plans to start doing some attendance after the first of the year when we have everyone connected. Uh, I had a meeting with uh, a lady salesman, of course, but uh, encyclopedias are now being available online uh, by way of the internet, so they can be up updated and you can have real current information, and there's possible sources of that. Once we have internet in, in the classroom level, teachers and students would be able to take advantage of that. The other piece of the network, the big piece that's left, is once we get our buildings internally connected, then we need to get them connected together, building to building. And with the help of Gail Schmader, and uh, we've, we've established a business connection with Time Warner. And Time Warner is providing us some, some consultation and some help in figuring out how we go about getting these buildings connected together. They've offered services that they will do at, at cost. In other words, they'll sell us the cable at cost and the installation services at cost. And part of that will be included in, in the budget proposal that I uh, give to you people, and, uh, and also in Mike McGovern's budget, because we're not talking about just connecting school buildings together, we're talking about school and municipal buildings. Computer access. We have a major lab in each one of the schools. Uh, Pond Cove has a lab of 24 computers, middle school has a lab, high school has a, a, both a Mac and a PC lab, and a third little satellite lab that was developed, kind of curriculum-driven, the math department and science department 
needed a, uh, a computer lab to take students to do things with their classes. And the regular computer labs are being most of the time taken up with regular scheduled classes. So there wasn't time for them to get in. So we've set up a little sa satellite lab up in that wing. Because of that third lab, we don't have classes in, uh, computers in all the classrooms yet, but we're very close. Uh, and that should be taken care of in the next, next budget cycle when we shift some things around. But just about all of, all of the classroom areas and special areas do have technology access now. One of the biggest problems um, that I see is printers. We, we set an adequate computer printer ratio, and that just doesn't exist right now, especially at the high school. Uh, the second floor of the high school, if you're way down at the, the end where the foreign language classes are, you have to walk way down the, the hall to the other end to the faculty room to pick up your print job. That's the way things are right now. So we, the goal was not to buy a printer for each one of the computers, but to buy a good networkable printer that could be clustered together in work groups. Um, so those will be hopefully addressed in the next budget cycle. But printers are, are uh, very scarce in some areas. The next area is the technology staff position. There's, this is kind of a transition year. Uh, when Jay was here, he was a hired as a technology coordinator full-time, but I believe an 11-month contract. Uh, I'm hired, or I'm filling this role as a, as a teacher's, with a teacher's contract right now. Uh, there is some summer work that's going to need to happen. There are, there are times when you need to do things to computer labs when you don't want students in there, when you need to disrupt the lab. Um, so there, there is some time that, that needs to happen above and beyond the school year schedule. So that will need to be addressed. Um, I'm going to spend some time over Christmas vacation redoing our mail server, upgrading the hardware and the software and that. And it needs to be done in a, in a kind of a downtime. So some of those things will need to be addressed in the budget cycle. Plan originally called for a half-time technology person in each building, actually before we even hired a full-time person. I still think there needs to be some support at that level, I'm not sure what that needs to be. Um, but when there's one of me and there's three buildings and I'm trying to run around and, and, and help and support staff in all three buildings, sometimes it's very difficult. So maybe if there was, if there was some intermediary, some other person or, uh, at the building level itself, that might help or assist in my position. And I think that came out in the exit interview with Jay as well. The next area is staff development. We had so far this year, we've had an August in-service with some in-service classes. There's been a lot of one-on-one -on -one tutoring with me. When I, if, I'm, if I set up uh, email in a teacher's classroom, I'll take the time and spend 10 or 15 minutes and show them how to use that email, access it, and send messages, and receive messages, and address the mail. So there's a, a lot of that happening. Uh, we're hiring some of our high school students to come down and work with some of our middle school teachers as kind of one-on-one -on -one tutors. Sometimes a teacher just needs that, that support and doesn't want to take a class or doesn't have the time to take a class, so we're making some arrangements like that. Uh, the in-service days that are coming up, we have some in-service for our secretaries and aides on, on the Monday with the, the help of Keith, Keith Witherall. Uh, asked him to help me out with some, some training for Microsoft Office, Microsoft Word. So that's going to happen that day. And then the second day, on the 23rd in the afternoon, we have a smorgasbord of technology offerings that our ta staff are signing up for. There's going to be uh, 16 different offerings in two time blocks. So we'll have uh, quite a bit of, of training in, on those two days. And the board has a list of those in their packet. And if there's space, we might even let them come. Great. <laughs> Some of the other staff development things have happened from us sending staff to conferences and workshops, um, and some partnerships with some business. I put a sheet on, in your packet about uh, National Semiconductors Global Connections. I think it was the very last page of, of the report. It's a program. National Semiconductor is tied to uh, the internet and to computers through their, their business. And they've, they've discovered a need that teachers need some training. So they've, they're offering in three states, the three states that ha they happen to have plants in, in Maine, Texas, and California, 
some in-service for teachers. Uh, myself, three, three teachers attended a session about a month ago over at National Semiconductor. Um, it was very well done. Uh, they flew people out from California to actually do these, this training session. And we're going to attend uh, the second follow-up session in January. And we hope to send other people to training sessions at this same site in the future. Uh, a tied with it is an award or a grant that teachers can apply to for innovative internet use in the classrooms. Uh, the teachers can get $10,000 in awards grant. And we as a school or a school system can get tied with that uh, a $20,000 staff development grant. So we hope to have some of our teachers apply for that. In fact, even to the point where we're um, off offering help and assistance in writing the grant. So the teacher will come up with the idea and we'll get some parent volunteers uh, to help put this together into a, into a form that they need for the grant. So those are the kinds of things that are happening with, with staff development. I just happened, I discovered another, uh, another training piece that's on the web through cable television. The cable television channels have put together uh, a site called uh, webteacher.org, and it's a web tutorial. The teachers can sit down, as long as they have internet access, they can sit down, and they can go through that at their leisure learn how to do email and browse the internet and do searching. And it's a kind of a self-tutorial, self-paced thing. So that's what's happening for staff development. Curriculum. Some of the work was done last year, a lot of data, data gathering. And uh, the, the curriculum committee will be meeting on the Monday of that workshop day. We haven't met yet this year. We plan to, to spend a lot of time in the second half of the year and have an outline of a proposal for you. There's uh, many things happening in technology in the classrooms, and I get the great opportunity and chance to, to see these things happening because I'm drifting around to, to all three buildings. I sit in the Pond Cove lab and see these youngsters getting on the internet and, and exploring sites that there was a unit on wolves that they were doing. And you could hear the, the sounds of the wolves throughout the, the Pond Cove lab uh, as they were exploring these sites. There are all kinds of things happening at, at all school levels. The math department is in, at the high school is using specific software for doing uh, sketching and graphing on the computer now. Uh, more and more of these things are happening at all, all levels. Another area, administrative software. We are compatible for administrative software. That's the software that runs our schools, that keeps track of attendance and things like that. We're compatible up to grade eight. We're using a Mac school package, and both Pond Cove and um, the middle school are happy with that. The high school is using an AES package, and we've been examining other solutions that will work for us at the high school level. We've even put a criteria sheet or list together as to what we're looking for, and uh, we haven't made a, a final decision as to which package we want to go with, but that will also be in, in the budget. And whatever this is will bring us together in sync K through 12, as far as it may not be the exact Mac school package, but it will be one that's compatible with Mac school. I am enjoying my work, although I, I get here my typical day is I get here at 6.30 in the morning and I've discovered that I can get, if I get to the schools and do things there first before kids and, and classrooms can, I can do some of the connections or, or do some of the troubleshooting before I come into the office and, and deal with some of the business stuff that I need to deal with. Uh, it's fun to see the, the technology being used more and more. I connected one teacher today and he's, he says to me, he says, you mean I, I, can, I can connect to the world? Basically, people from the world can, can email me right in my classroom and I can email them, and yes, we can do that. And it's amazing to see that these people didn't realize that we were going to do that and, and, and have that service available for them. We've made great strides since a few years back when we had two Apple IIe labs in our middle school. Um, we have a ways to go. We still have some older technology. My inventory sheet which should show you some of our, our older ones. When I, when I deal with some LCs that I'm trying to get a, a system on, a basic Claris works, and get an email package, and that's about it. Those computers can't connect to the internet. So those are the ones we want to look at 
at upgrading into the future. And we all know that technology, technology changes very, very rapidly and very quickly. So I hope that we'll continue investing in our technology so that we can keep up to date and not have those, quote, Apple, those things like we did the Apple IIe laps a few years back. Um, I'll end with a couple of quick little stories. Getting people on the network, I found, isn't, as, isn't sometimes a pleasant situation as I thought. I did want to get everyone on the network. I came in one weekend and I hooked up the whole first grade. Got them all on the new Ethernet network, got email running in their room. And it was, oh, it was late, at, it was around 7, 7.30 at night. And I said, well, I'll check the printing when I come in Monday morning. That was my big mistake. When I came in Monday morning, the, uh, or later Monday in the day, the first grade teachers were ready to lynch me because they couldn't print anymore. I hadn't checked that printer, I hadn't configured it, and I found out, discovered that it wasn't a networkable printer. So we had to find and scramble and replace one. Um, but that, that goes to show that the teachers are using the technology and when it isn't working, it does make a difference. And uh, I guess I'm the one that they come to when it isn't working. Earlene Jackson and the middle school sends out notices religiously by email. That's the way that they're going out. I noticed that when she was preparing the budget for technology, she gave everyone a little disk. Here's where you put your budget information on this, instead of a packet of papers like we've got in the past. Um, the email system was down oh, a week or so ago. So I went down and I restarted our internet gateway, and I'm sitting there watching it, and as the, the messages were, that were waiting to be delivered, it was 126 messages waiting to be delivered on that email system. So it is being used and it is important and I, I hear about it when it's down. And that's okay. Um, do you people have any questions or comments? Yeah. Thank you, Gary. This is a great job and uh, really appreciate it. We know you're running around and working really hard and it looks like um, you've got a great plan. I'm most um, interested in the curriculum piece. Um, I think we really need to to address that, and I know you've been so busy, but um, I think that's really important that we figure out what skills the kids are going to need and where they're going to get them, because it does change all the time, but we've still got to start and get going at, that's right. at some point. Um, and maybe it's, you know, we just need to get you some more support so that you're not running around just fixing the printers and the networking. The other thing is, if the teachers are connected now to email, can parents email them from home if the parents have email directly into the system? Yes. In fact, I think Tom gave all of his staff, you know, business cards with their email address on it. Because so I think that would be interesting to get out to parents so that they can email the teacher quick questions and things that you don't, don't need a phone call or whatever. And then, um, and even if the teacher wants to put a little newsletter out, again, it won't get to everybody, it won't have email, but it would be a... We have the capacity to do that on our email system. We have general conference, general public areas that can be um, accessible by anyone. And with this new upgrade to the email system that should happen over Christmas vacation, that system can even be accessed by way of the web mm -hmm. and the internet. So anyone with internet access wouldn't need the special software that we have. Uh, we'll be so able to access it. If I have AOL at home, I can email into a teacher at school, or I have to have yes. something special. No. You could email into, into a teacher at school. Great. Yes, you could. I, my predecessor's quotes on, Jay, I, I love this quote, and I used it in, in several other little presentations. Uh, all the boxes and wires that we put aren't going to meet a thing if it, if it doesn't you know, meet the needs of the, of the students and enhance their learning through the curriculum. And the curriculum is a piece that we really need to spend some time on, and yeah. I hope we'll focus on the second half of the year. Keith. A uh, related question with email, is there any uh, possibility with our system to get student accounts? S students can get accounts. Um, I don't, we don't have enough licenses to give all students account, but we, any student that requests an account, yes, we usually fill those. Um, again, the new system is going to have a certain number of what are called session accounts. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a registered user. And we'll have, I think, a dozen of, of those to begin with. So that means a dozen, anybody could use those dozen slots to log into our email system. Yeah. Uh, last year, we, we instituted an employee buy program with payroll deduction and so forth. Uh, 
Any thoughts on the success of that program and any possibility of it running again if it was successful? I'm not sure how many people took advantage. I don't have the numbers as far as how many people took advantage of that. But whenever staff ask me, I do everything in my power to help them obtain the technology by way of the school discounts and, and the, uh, the Apple Education Advantage plan. Uh, so anything that I can do to help them get the technology, I try to work with them and, and provide them the information and the access for that. Thanks. Sure. Just uh, a couple of comments and questions. Um, I too am impressed with the work that's been done and uh, you should be congratulated. Um, in terms of email, is there, is there a way to access into a directory for, for all of the email in the system? Um, it hasn't been updated lately. That's one of the things that we need to do. Um, but Basically, all of the staff should have an email address. And how would, Teachers we, how would we, Just is, is, there a, is there a physical directory, a, a, a paper directory that there exists is, or? There isn't, but all of our staff and all, the address for all of our staff, like for example, myself, my address is Gary underline Lenoy, and then the at, and it's because of the Maine State Library Network, it's a government thing, mm -hmm. but it's at kphs.kate.k12.me.us. So Once any staff. Once you know that, Pat, all you need to know is the name that you right. to go to. So any staff member would be first name, underscore, last name, at kphs.kate.k12.me.us. I didn't write that down, but <laughs> I'll get it for you. I, I'm sure I can. It's on your computer when you get emails from Cynthia. It's the whole. Oh, I know. I saw that. Okay. Um, and, and just. Um, uh, just another comment, and uh, perhaps you've already thought about this. In terms of uh, need for staffing, um, uh, where, wherever possible, um, might we consider sort of some job share with high school students? Is that is that so some of our high school students? Yes, have been very integral in getting the network up and running, and they're some of us. Some of them are very very skilled, and uh, yes, they're actually probably my first level of support at the high school is the students because that's where their staff go to. Uh, in some of the other schools, um, the, the assistant or the aide in the, in the computer lab has assisted me a lot. If it's just a routine thing where a teacher X needs a certain piece of software installed on the machine, instead of me running over there, it'd be nice to have a person at the building level that could do that. And possibly those aides could, could fill that role and do some of that. Earlier this evening, we talked about the possibility of sending out school newsletters. Do you have a sense, and I realize this is really just a guess, but do you have a sense as to how many homes or what percentage of the students we could contact that way in Cape Elizabeth? By way of email? Yeah. Or or if, we were to do, if we were to do the, uh, the newsletter online. When I, was, when I was teaching the Lighthouse program at the high school, it seemed to me we'd always survey all of the freshman classes that came through. And from my recollections, it probably was up in the 60 to 70 percent range had some kind of technology and online access at home. So it's a large percentage. That number is really supposed to increase over the next six months, too. The, the home PC market is now under that $1,000 right. uh, range. So it's, uh, it's going to continue ex to expand. You know, sometimes it's the soft signs of progress that we make. And uh, about a week ago, Gary and I were talking at the end of the day and we were reviewing what kind of days we had had and, and he said, well, he had a couple of teachers at Pond Cove who were really angry with him because their computers were down and I said, a year or so ago, they wouldn't have cared. So I mean, that to me, that was real progress to think that people were really, want to be sure that the technology is working all the time. So I think that's a, a strong sign. When we look, oh, go ahead. When we're looking at additional resources, I know that Jay used SMTC's uh, computer program or computer student access last year. That might be also as a way of maybe even hiring some, some of those students for your next year in your budget. Yes. I know they were, they, they, we acquired them at minimal cost and um, it was training for them, but also helped save us, but also in hands-on day-to-day stuff. Right. I think we just had to feed him pizza and soda. So. Right. But I mean, that's, that's also a close resource that we could tap into. Yes, it is. And 
I hate, this is hard for me to say since I was with you when you started this process and we developed a five-year plan. And in looking at this five-year plan, we're in the third year of it, but we're far to almost the end of some of those five-year goals. It may be time for your steering committee to look at developing a new five-year plan. I don't want to add anything, but I, mm -hmm. we need to be I planning. I mean, I, we're, we're implementing now, and I think we need to be looking long range and doing some additional planning and stretching. I agree. I think we, we do need to re-examine that plan and take a look at what it means for the future. This we'll town work. likes five-year goals, so <laughs> not just the school, but the town. So. And we're starting to integrate more with the town in this process. So. Yeah, in fact, the discussions with Time Warner and connecting the buildings, Michael McGovern's been involved with those, and uh, you know, there probably will be a, a shared cost between both the town and the school for that network. I'm pleased with our progress, but with it comes some additional work. <laughs> yes. And updating. I thank you, Gary. Okay, thank you. Uh, we now move on to the principal's reports, and we will start with the middle school. Good evening. Um, also, I'd just like to thank Gary for all of the work that he did, and also um, thank Jay for all the work he did last year as well. Um, it is exciting to listen to students talk about using the computer just as automatically as at one time they might have talked about using pencils and paper. So they really do use it every single day. Thank you for your kind comments about our concert last night. I also thought it was a tremendous success and compliment all the participants, um, especially those sixth grade band members who sat up on those bleachers practically through the whole concert after they, they performed first and then they sat there the rest of the time and did a great job and really demonstrated some excellent behavior. So compliments to them. At today's team leaders meeting, we were working to come to some more final points with our drafts of the materials that we're going to send out to the New England League of Middle Schools, the people who will be doing our external review in February. And we are still working on a target date of getting those in the mail this Friday. Um, I thank all the team leaders who have worked hard to interpret the graphs and also our parent volunteers who have helped us in our reading and our wording as we progress further with those drafts. On January 29th, we are getting ready to host our first career fair. Gail Schmader is doing a tremendous amount of work setting that up for us. And we are planning to have 23 presenters so that the students will get to go to three different presentations between 8 and 9.30. This will take the first two periods of the day. One of those classes will actually be their allied arts time, and then they will just miss one academic class for that day. There will be some um, preparation work done through the advisor advisee program and also some follow-up from the career day. And we are looking forward to this being a great success. I think the final thing, well, I do want to remind, just as Sarah said, that we have announced that the items in our lost and found will be taken to goodwill on December 22nd. And really saying that for the benefit of any parents who might be watching, because our students walk by that material daily and are pretty sure nothing of theirs is in that collection. Um, if parents have a chance to stop by, they may actually find some things that belong to members of their family in that collection. Our volunteer club is going to go through it and try to check out names and connect and contact people directly um, with their lost items. But um, just a fair warning for everyone that we do need to, it becomes quite a collection and we do need to take care of that. Also to invite all of you to the middle school on Thursday, if you can drop by, Susie Van Wy is going to be in our large conference room that day and she's setting up a presentation, some slides and materials from her recent trip to Japan. And the day is designed really for adults in this particular one, for teachers to drop by during their planning time. Certainly the invitation goes out to Pond Cove teachers and high school teachers if they can come. And just to drop by, people may pick her up in the middle of a presentation or whatever, but it's the type of sharing that if you can drop by for a half an hour, you'll still get a great deal out of it. So if anyone is around then, please feel free to stop by. And please be patient with us. I know our student council members are working on contacting you to come and visit the middle school for a day. And I think that's it for tonight. Any questions? 
Thank you, Nancy. Next is the high school. Good evening. Um, earlier was tempted to say that there's, there's nothing to report, and that, that seemed like um, such an irony, uh, because it, it, it seems like uh, the, the pace at the high school continues to be amazing to me, the pace that uh, both faculty and students are maintaining. Uh, so I won't say that there's nothing to report. There, there has been much going on. We have been focusing, uh, as we have from the beginning on, of the year, uh, on creating and, and maintaining an atmosphere in the high school where we are always looking at ourselves and looking for ways to uh, improve. And, and that has involved a couple of fairly simple processes, really, and yet uh, they are continually a challenge to find ways to, uh, to do this. One of those uh, ways is, is finding time for the faculty to talk with uh, one another about the ideas that they have. We have tremendous resource. I have realized very quickly that we have tremendous resources uh, in the high school faculty. Uh, and so we need to uh, unlock opportunities to uh, talk about, to, to talk together about the issues that we're facing. Second, uh, I think one of the first days that I was here, uh, Dwight Ely, the assistant principal, mentioned to me that uh, his feeling was that one of the most underused resources that we had in our school uh, were the students, and uh, that we needed to find ways to, uh, to, to tap their ideas and, and their energy. Uh, and so we have uh, been working on ways to do that, and, and you heard in the SAC report, uh, of a, of a couple of the, the, the results uh, of that type of work where we're asking students for their input, and that is their, their presentation to the policy committee. And I would add that I, re I have received a letter from a parent who attended that policy committee meeting uh, on a, an entirely different issue, but who was there to hear that presentation. And uh, the first several paragraphs of the letter alluded to uh, the extremely positive impression that she had received by hearing our high school students present their views on the uh, eligibility policy, and she uh, felt that that was uh, something that should be uh, commended. But they also did uh, an equally good job, and not just the same representatives, uh, in meeting with the faculty. Uh, so I'd like to commend both the SAC reps and the faculty for taking time. Uh, when faculty met with them, it was out of lunch hour. Uh, they voluntarily came down to hear the students' viewpoints, uh, to uh, toss some of their own ideas uh, to the students. Uh, I thought it represented the very best in kind of collaborative work at looking at uh, the ways that we can make ourselves uh, better. Uh, as was mentioned in the SAC report, uh, we used uh, yesterday's faculty meet, part of yesterday's faculty meeting to uh, discuss faculty views to, fi to finally crystallize the views on the eligibility policy. And I will have a report in writing to the policy committee in the next day or two uh, regarding the results of that uh, meeting. Uh, other issues that we've been talking about, continuing to talk about uh, as a high school faculty and staff uh, are such things as um, how do we meet the full range of, uh, of needs that we have in our student body, academic needs. Does our program reach all students? And if not, uh, where are our weaknesses? What do we need to do to address them? Uh, how do we organize our time? Uh, in yesterday's meeting, we were talking more about the annual picture of uh, how, how do we have our uh, calendar organized and does it make sense for us? Uh, are there things that we do that, um, uh, that, that uh, uh, lessen the program that we can offer? And as I've mentioned, the various policy issues have been on uh, everyone's mind. We've been using the faculty meetings to create opportunities for faculty who don't normally see each other that much during the day. If those of you who have visited the building or whether you visited this year or not, uh, I'm sure you can just look at the building and, and notice the way that it sprawls. Uh, it can, have, uh, it can have its advantages, but the disadvantage of that uh, building is that uh, if you work at one end of the building, you very often don't see your colleagues who work at the other end. So we've been trying to use faculty meetings as opportunities for people who don't normally share the same office or classroom area to get together and share ideas. And I, I feel very good about what is being accomplished in those meetings. 
Some upcoming events that uh, I'd like you to mark your uh, calendars for. Uh, tomorrow night uh, is a uh, uh, performance by the Harlem Rockets, uh, a uh, basketball team that will come in and play a faculty all-star uh, group. I think we use that term loosely, although I may be surprised. Um, uh, that is a fundraiser. Uh, it's a, uh, a group that provides a great deal, deal of entertainment uh, while, while out on the court. Uh, Monday, December 15th is our winter concert. Uh, the instrumental and vocal uh, groups will be performing with a snow date of, the t of Wednesday, December 17th. And then uh, while it's a month away at this point, uh, it will be before the next uh, board meeting, so I want you to be aware of it uh, at this point. Our winter play uh, entitled Attractions will be uh, presented on uh, three different occasions. January, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, January 8th, 9th, and 11th. Uh, January 8th and 9th will be evening performances at 7 p.m., and the Sunday performance will be a matinee at 2. Uh, I know the reputation of Cape Elizabeth's Performing Arts Program uh, has preceded it uh, uh, itself uh, with me, so I know that I am uh, looking forward to those performances with tremendous anticipation, and I hope that you have the chance to uh, come and, and uh, see the work that is accomplished when talented students are collaborating with talented faculty. It's uh, usually something to behold. That's all I have. Um, open to questions. Thank you, Peter. <clears throat> and finally, the Pond Cove. Good evening, again. Um, since last month's uh, official or regular school board meeting, we have hired uh, an ed tech for the kindergarten. We had a substitute for a little while. And I think we were fortunate to get uh, a, a former teacher in there who started officially last week. We also, to follow up on concerns and comments at the meeting last month, reviewed safety, communication, and supervision procedures with uh, the three kindergarten teachers and the ed techs to make sure we all knew what we were doing. And yes, indeed, the uh, uh, intercom does work and the helpful. And the summary of that meeting was sent home to all kindergarten parents, and the feedback I've gotten about that has been positive. Um, you may or may not know that Sarah Berman has gotten a grant from the University of Southern Maine Law School to work with the peer mediators. And last Monday, she had 19 fourth graders over at 1226 Shore Road to uh, further develop a project to do mediation on the Ponco Playground, which I think they'll get more business there than they will in the, uh, <laughs> that's what we decided. Um, so you'll probably be hearing more about that. I think they did a really good job so far. And uh, Paul Gaspar, who was there, um, took an interest and joined the conversation and uh, will probably attend their next meeting. Um, I've sent you a copy of um, a report by Dr. Steve Ivins, who helped develop the degrees of reading power test we talked about last week or the week before. He came to a Pond Cove meeting for the Pond Cove teachers. Some middle school teachers came to give us some more background on the use of the test and the scores and so on. And the, uh, the feedback was positive about that, too. A couple of weeks ago, we had our second informational meeting for parents on Chicago math. About 20 or 25 people came. and. Uh, seem to appreciate the opportunity to go through some of the student activities. And I must say I was impressed with their level of knowledge and their um, the support for the program. And I, I think I sent home, if you're Pond Cove parents, uh, the state of Kentucky did a uh, survey of commercially available material nationwide that uh, is known to increase student achievement. The University of Chicago math program is on that list. Out of a thousand program surveyed, they only found 64 documented successes. We had two, University of Chicago math program and reading recovery. And I hope FOSS is on there. I've emailed them to see if FOSS is on the list. It probably is. Um, speaking of FOSS, uh, Andy Vale has continued to work with uh, grades K through six with the FOSS program. And he'll, uh, Andy works for the Learning Center in, in uh, Scarborough. He'll be here next week to work with the sixth grade teachers to give them some specific training on a, a unit they haven't done yet. Um, so they're looking forward to that. And we had four, 
fourth, third grade teachers up at PRISM today, Problem Solving in Science and Math, a statewide conference that's tough to get into. Uh, besides having people attend uh, in the audience, we were invited to present uh, Cape Elizabeth's way of adopting curriculum, science curriculum. So Carrie Curtis, high school teacher Carrie Curtis, fourth grade teacher Ingrid Stressinger, Ed Tech, Gay Howe, and I went up and uh, talked to people. I, I have to say that it, it's nice to hear from all points of view on this, particularly from an Ed Tech who's doing such a good job. But without that person in the job to get the things to the teachers, the thing would probably fall apart. And one last item, we really appreciate the support from the uh, Pond Cove Parents Association. At the uh, math meeting, parents wanted more material on uh, Chicago math. It's really hard to get it away from teachers. They use it so much. So I'm probably going to ask the uh, PCPA, since they've suggested it, to buy duplicate teacher's manuals and uh, samples of student uh, journals to keep in the, res the uh, teacher resource room outside the, the uh, library media center. And the same thing for the FOSS teacher's guides so that uh, parents who take an interest can come look at it there or check it out and see what's going on in school. And the, the other thing that the PCPA has done this year is award mini grants to interested teachers. The process is similar to how we're spending our Title VI money for innovative education. And Ingrid Stressinger and uh, Ogden Williams have come up with a plan, um, submitted it to the PCPA, and they've gotten their money. Uh, Ingrid's doing a plan through research through Audubon Society, and Ogden is going to help the uh, fourth grade publish a book on Maine history. So we really appreciate that support. Questions? Just, Tom, yeah. we'd love to get your uh, minutes from your faculty meetings and team leaders. We're still not. Um, John mentioned that, and I, I'm not sure what happened. John talked to me last week, and um, they, you should be getting them from now on. We, I, I blame Mary Ann, the, the lack of Mary Ann. John said that wasn't fair, but we, we'll, we'll send them over from now on. Great. Thanks. And any high school ones, too. Uh, Tom? Yep. Are you getting? Uh, Input from the high school students in the K grade, getting volunteers to help. And how many? Um, we have. Um, I'm not sure of the number. Uh, three to five high school kids coming over to help is with specific things like uh, math, um, help tutor kids. And uh, Doug Worthley's class came over last month. A whole class came over to do a, an assessment in science. That took quite a bit of setup. And if all goes well, I think uh, Doug's class and one of Kerry Curtis's class, this would be a total of about 40 high school students, are coming back next week to help with science again. Uh, when, whenever they come over, it seems as if we think of another uh, plan to do. So we have um, probably 50 kids in the next month will be involved, 50 high school kids helping Pond Cove students. And you're also getting help at the, the K level? Oh, I'm sorry. the K. Um, I don't know. Are we, have we set that up? No. Okay. We haven't yet. We'll have to do Skip that. Skip Crosby had some students. I don't know what the status is. There are students through the Student Service Program. Right, through Skip Crosby. Any idea how many? I would say probably um, eight or nine at this point. Um, it varies from semester to semester. Yep. Um, there is also a group of middle school students um, who now go down and volunteer. Quite a, a significant group who go down and help students um, get ready for bus dismissal, mm -hmm. especially now that it's winter and the zippers are a little bit tough. Um, so there's a significant amount of students going over there. Well, I'm encouraged to hear that, and it's apparently starting to come together for some good support. That's the main thing. Yeah. I guess I took the opportunity to brag about the science. Well, I appreciate that, too. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thanks. We now move on to committee reports, and the first is the Finance Subcommittee and Keith. Uh, we met at 6.30 tonight uh, in the conference chamber, or the chamber conference room. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we signed the warrants. Uh, we didn't really review the appropriations report, although it was on the agenda. I guess there was no... Uh, outstanding questions. Uh, we reviewed a, uh, the stage curtain request for both the middle school and the high school, and uh, that's uh, approved. Uh, we reviewed the postage waiver for, for the uh, Parents Association in terms of sending out the newsletter, the, uh, I guess it's the middle school newsletter. I'll break. 
Pond Cove goes home with students. Right. So it is, uh, if, it is if, the... But I think the waiver is to be yep. considered for any school. Okay, and uh, we uh, approve that request, so now the uh, postage costs will fall under the uh, school district. Uh, we discussed a staffing request for Pond Cove, which we'll deal with later on in this meeting. Uh, we spent a lot of time on the capital improvement plan budget, which is a five-year plan uh, for uh, updating our, our buildings and keeping them in repair and so forth, and uh, we're still working on that, and that'll be going back and forth between the town and, and the school in, in terms of priorities and costs and so forth. It is a, it's a large budget item. Up, uh, in the half million dollar range uh, each year over the next few years anyway. Thanks. Just a clarification on the stage curtain request that was for both the high school and the middle school auditorium. Thank you, Keith. Next is the policy subcommittee and George. The, um, the policy subcommittee has actually met uh, twice since the last school board meeting and uh, so as to make this have this make sense I'll, I'll try to carry the themes through in terms of the um, the particular items that we've been working on um, there was a meeting on November 13th um, and as well another meeting on December 8th um, the issue of time on task and and just the general issue of time both from a perspective of 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 the student as well as the teacher. Um, in November, we had to defer to our December meeting, uh, but more recently, yesterday, actually, um, at the December meeting, uh, there was a general consensus that, that uh, this whole issue of time is critically important uh, from a number of different perspectives. And there was a decision made to pull together a group of representatives, um, parents, teachers, administrators, school board members, um, that would serve to um, structure uh, an, an upcoming workshop. So essentially, uh, we have decided to create a kind of a planning group, uh, which should be probably about 15 people, uh, and they will meet on January 15th uh, at 4 p.m., the purpose of which is uh, for that group to really structure uh, a, another opportunity for a, a dialogue around this whole issue of time. It's a very, very big issue. Um, it permeates every other kind of issue that we speak about. And, um, and we felt it important uh, to just get um, a, a wide representation involved, and, and, uh, but at the same time to accelerate our work on this. So essentially, that's being spun out of the policy subcommittee um, uh, purview and is kind of taking on a life of its own and an accelerated life at that. Um, Another issue uh, that we've been dealing with has to do with um, uh, some proposed uh, revisions um, for the uh, athletic and co-curricular eligibility policy. Uh, we did in November receive a presentation from high school students and uh, they were complimented on that um, earlier. Uh, and in December, yesterday's meeting, uh, we did decide that um, I think it was the sentiment of the subcommittee uh, that we would uh, look at some level of revision to the current policy um, and uh, that we were still looking for some more input from uh, Peter's meeting with the faculty um, uh, and that uh, our next meeting, which will be Wednesday, January 14th at 7.45, uh, that we will have an ex extended uh, discussion with regard to those revisions and in, in likelihood will come out of that subcommittee meeting uh, with a, a larger proposal uh, for the rest of the board to review. Uh, any changes to that policy will be done uh, for the next academic year. Um, we also, over the course of these uh, last two meetings, uh, took a look at some um, uh, policy issues having to do with, uh, with transportation matters. Uh, Sue was involved with that, and um, we have made some clarifications uh, to some of the school bus and transportation policies, uh, one of which is prepared for first reading tonight, um, two others of which will come before the board uh, in January. Um, in the November meeting as well, 
um, file IHB, which has to do with class size recommendations. These were recommendations made by, um, by the board at some previous time. Uh, we were asked by uh, two community representatives to reconsider the recommendations around, um, uh, around class size and to instead make them firm policy. And it was, decision, it was a, the decision of the committee uh, to leave that and those recommendations intact with no changes and instead uh, reflecting on the issue around the kindergarten class size and, and sort of the genesis of, of this, this whole issue. Um, we, ha as a subcommittee, um, referred some of the operating and some of the communication issues um, uh, back to the administrative team and asked them to really take a close look at um, um, uh, some of those surrounding issues, uh, specifically around communication guidelines uh, in terms of, um, uh, of classroom size. I think that's, um, those are the, those are the uh, significant issues. Thank you, George. Uh, we now move on to uh, oh, yeah, Athletic Steering Committee. Thank you. The Athletic Steering Committee met this afternoon. Uh, a few things discussed. Uh, Keith Weatherby has, uh, assembled some data regarding our uh, gender equity uh, for sports in the high school and in the middle school. Um, there is a question as to what equity means, whether it's the same number of sports for each, you know, each gender or whether each sport has to be offered to each gender. So that's, that's a question that we're, we have to get sorted out. Uh, Basically, the recommendation is to continue on with the, the same sports that we have, and uh, it is quite equitable. Uh, there's a proposal to add a middle school girls lacrosse team. This would be not for this spring, but for the spring of 99, so it would be in next year's budget. Uh, that's at an estimated cost of about $2,200. Uh, also, uh, there's going to be uh, surveys given to all the students, uh, middle school and high school, at the end of their sports season to uh, rate their experience and, and so forth, uh, try to gather some data on how the students are feeling about their teams and so forth. This is a good meeting. Keith, there, there was a request from the high school girls lacrosse club team to, be, uh, to have their status changed to a uh, sanctioned school team, do you know if that came before your committee? That didn't come before today, is it? You mean, uh, high school, it must be middle school. It was middle school. school. Was it middle school? High, middle school? school? high school's already a team. High school. Okay. High school okay. Thank you. Um, evidently we have no unfinished business. <laughs> That's unusual. Okay, moving on to new business, and the first is a consideration of a teacher request to change from full-time to part-time status, and I yield to the superintendent. Yes, I have a request from Richard Mullen to, to <coughs> retire from his status as a full-time teacher as of January 23, 1998. He wishes to retire from the English portion of his assignment, but he will retain the theater portion, so that will be he will be a point four teacher rather than a full-time teacher. And uh, certainly Dick has been a valuable member of the faculty, and if this is his wish, I highly recommend it, and Peter concurs with me. And certainly Peter can address how the staffing might be handled for the rest of the year if you're interested. That was my question. Okay. <laughs> Could you come forward and explain how you're going to handle the staffing if this is approved? Um, the most likely uh, scenarios would be to increase the load of a current uh, part-time teacher uh, to handle at uh, probably two of the English sections that are currently uh, held by Mr. Mullen. And the third, we have uh, just uh, combined, we are in the process of combining uh, one section uh, of, a, of a class that was offered since the beginning of the year uh, and because of a variety of factors uh, that uh, the, the number of students in that class had gotten to a point where we couldn't justify uh, keeping that section so that teacher who was a full-time teacher will be able to pick up uh, the third uh, section of the uh, of Mr. Mullins class. So this will result in a reduction of point. 
two teaching positions for the rest of the year? Yes, the total, uh, yes, the, the, the uh, end result would be that. How many of Mr. Mullen's classes are honors session, section uh, of the three? The, the th uh, three that uh, he, uh, he would be leaving, we would have two honors and one CP. Any other question? Is this, uh, is this gonna affect the, the size of those classes? Peter, are you saying that there's, a, there's just other people who will assume that load, but there's not a combining of classes? No, the, the two, the, uh, uh, all three of the classes will exist in their, uh, in, in their present form. Uh, they, they will not be reconfigured uh, in any way. It's one of the courses that was not taught by Mr. Mullen at all that, that is, uh, uh, had reached a point where we combined it with another section because it had become so small. I would the uh, part-time teacher you're referring to has been approached and has accepted this additional uh, workload? Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to uh, use that terminology because we haven't been able to offer it, but uh, has indicated an interest in, in, uh, in increasing uh, his workload. Yes, I've approached him also, and he has indicated yes. he's available. I would uh, reiterate uh, Dr. Mole's comment that uh, while uh, we do have plans to in place to uh, uh, to cover those sections, um, in my short stay here, I certainly have come to appreciate the talents that Mr. Mullen brings to the classroom, and uh, so saying that we have plans to uh, to cover those classes is not in any way uh, meant to imply that we would uh, completely replace him. Any other questions? Entertain a motion. I would make the motion uh, as the parent of one of the, the uh, students that is unfortunately uh, going to lose Mr. Mullen for the rest of the year. Uh, I congratulate him on his change and certainly support it, uh, but regretfully for us of the students, um, uh, still would make the motion that we uh, support the superintendent's recommendation uh, and approve Mr. Mullen's request. Do I have a second, John? Any other discussion? I'll just say I'm sure that Mr. Mullen will be very sadly missed by his classes. I know he is truly appreciated as a wonderful, wonderful teacher. I will concur in that, and I find that the person who will have to replace him in those three sections, and especially his two honor sessions, will have big, big shoes to fill, and and wonder if they will bring the same amount of energy that he does. And I hope that the students benefit from the change. And we thank you very much for your, your years of service and glad that you're going to remain with us in a very thriving theater program. All those in favor? Could, could you be sure that in the motion it does say retirement request for legal reasons? I didn't make the motion. John. I mean, um, George. George. To, to um, the, Mary, to be sure. Make yeah. the motion that we entertain, that we uh, support the superintendent's recommendation for Mr. Mullen's request retirement. for re retirement uh, to a part time yes. teaching position. You, sec you second the amended motion okay. or clarified motion. <laughs> okay, all those in favor? 7 0. I do have some athletic nominations. At the high school, Chris Turner for varsity boys basketball assistant. And this is a voluntary position. Uh, he does it without pay. At the middle school, we have Sarah Randall, who will be the eighth grade girls basketball coach. And this is her second year in that position. And Aaron Balistreri, indoor track. And this is his second year in that position. Entertain a motion. I move we accept the superintendent's nomination. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. And I have co-curricula. We have Norm Richardson as Jazz Band 1 director, Anthony Marrow as Jazz Band 2 director, and Richard Masters as Jazz Combo 1 and 2. I also need to have you confirm Betsy Nielsen as the technology department head 
this is a position she's been doing that she picked up when Gary became the technology coordinator, and I think we never read that into the official minutes. Entertain a motion. Yeah. <laughs> I make a motion that we approve the superintendent's nomination for a co-curricular position. Do we have a second? Second. Keith, any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Okay, um, D, policy, first reading, e EAC school bus safety program. George. Uh, we have uh, this evening uh, coming for a first reading um, a revision of the school bus safety program. Um, this came through discussion with the director of um, community services uh, who attended uh, both uh, policy subcommittee meetings. Um, I have uh, for you a, um, a, a uh, copy of this same first reading with a small clarification on it. And um, I guess I'll share that with you first and have you look at it. It's a, it's a small revision. Um, what you find in the first paragraph is, in bold is the change, um, specifically, specifically adding um, uh, the statement that responsibility for student riders begins when the rider sets foot on the bus and ends when the rider safely exits the bus at, at, their, desti at their destination. Specific guidelines for the administration of transportation services exist for each school and are available from the superintendent's office. Uh, and that was the first reading that you received in your packet. The next paragraph, um, however, there has been a clarification added. Emergency evacuation drills shall be conducted twice a year. Uh, what you saw in your first reading in the packet said regularly. And it was just to provide more specification. So I am uh, presenting this for a, a first reading. It looks fine. Any other comments? Uh, just a quick question. Do we, in the evacuation drills, are the kids jumping out the back door and that type of thing? So oh. does it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Tony. Does this language, uh, uh, Judge, correspond with anything that's mandated by the state? I, I guess I would, I would defer to Sue. Um, Twice yearly. Yeah, but on the upper paragraph where it says where the uh, responsibility begins and ends, is that pretty much within state guidelines? Thank you. Any other comments? And we'll see this again in January for a second reading. And finally, under new business uh, proposal for a teacher plan for an EdTech 2 in Pond Cove. Right, it, it became apparent as the school year wore on that teachers at Pond Cove School did not have adequate planning time, either individual planning time or common planning time. And so in an attempt to remedy this situation, uh, we did come up with a plan, Tom and I came up with a plan, and you had written material in your packet as well as we had a conversation at the Finance Committee. And as a result of that, I wish to recommend that we hire an additional Ed Tech 2 for Pond Cove School commencing after the holiday break for the remainder of the school year, and that will be supplemented by the usage of some substitutes. This will ensure that every teacher has one break during the day and also that every teacher has at least one common planning, every grade level actually has at least one common planning period during the course of the week. Uh, the cost of this to be absorbed from some changes in the salary account due to a resignation. And in your request, you, the cost is not to exceed $12,000. For the ed tech team. For the ed tech That's team. correct. And the substitute is coming, some of that from some grant, grant money. That's correct. And this was unanimously approved by the faculty at Plunko. Any clarification? Just, just a comment. Uh, once again, I think hindsight is 2020, and we, when we're making our cuts, 
to the budget in March, next March, uh, we, I think we really have to follow through as to what the effect of those cuts are going to be um, so we don't have to put ourselves in these situations a, you know, a year from now. And you are correct that we eliminated three EdTech twos from the Pond Cove staff this past year. And then also we had some changes in terms of playground uh, supervision and that type of thing. But that's why we're back. John? <coughs> I guess just one other comment, too. I mean, and this is kind of the black box theory of education. Something was definitely wrong, and it pays to look at it. The um, substitute solution gets at the time problem in a, in a fairly creative way. So it's not just, I mean, we had a system that wasn't working a few years ago. This way, with uh, limited time each week, with back-to-back -back scheduling, Pond Cove teachers should have three common planning periods a week, which is, um, uh, whatever I say, I'm sure someone says is wrong, but that's a lot uh, for not much money. So um, sometimes a fever, you get better, is my opinion. So. This is also a process that's being used somewhere else. It's nothing that we're creating. Right. The use of, the use of subs for planning time. Right. right. Um, and in the research I've done, you, you just have to adapt it to your needs. No school is identical, so it's, you don't just import it. Um, we're I think, in a sense, lucky that it happens to work. Um, we may ask for something next year, but it does begin to address the need for having some time for teachers to get together during the day. So thank you. It'll go a long way. Right. Uh, other districts sometimes have a late start or uh, an early yeah. release during the course of the week, and we really didn't want to cut into the students' time at school. So this is why this was a preferable plan as far as we were concerned. Stuart. Um Tom, I'm, I'm very supportive of, of the, uh, the planning time. I, I wonder if you could, uh, I know that it's, re it's really not the season, but if you could tell me how this might uh, positively affect the, um, the recess issue uh, for, the, for the kids at the school. It, it doesn't really address re recess. It, it, it really wasn't designed to. It's, it's teacher planning time. I, I'm not sure what question you're getting at. The noon recess? Yes. Um, teachers are on their own for scheduling that. Um, and some teachers take them out around recess or later, and some don't. So this um, this sort of intervention is is would not in any way um, serve to to re to uh, provide resources to reinstate that. Um, it. Let me go back a little bit. A, a few years ago, we're talking about it's a numbers thing for me. We, we had 300 kids at once on the playground. And then, which I think is far too many. Last year it was in half, and this year uh, my supervision level, comfort level, seems to be about four classes. That's about 80 kids, which seems about right. Our problem is we have to get 550 kids out to recess and back. And it, it's uh, not a good choice either way. I think too many kids in the playground leads to a poor recess and all kinds of problems. So. The scheduled recess now for Pond Cove students is in the morning to rotate them through. And I truly believe from, from seeing it and being out there, that's much more positive. Again, I don't have hard data. Some parents have called me to say they appreciate it because it's kind of a sore point um, for parents and students. But on the other hand, it means it has cut into teacher time. So it's, it's a choice. And I think what I'm asking teachers to do is um, strike a balance. Some teachers have said, um, yes, I'll take my kids out on their own. Some of them share the responsibility. The first grade, uh, I think, is in a rotation now. After lunch, they, some of them have special, some don't, but they share a recess outside with a reasonable number of kids. Having more ed techs, um, I've talked to Cynthia about it, doesn't really solve the problem because we need teachers outside to do the duty. Right, Cynthia? Right. Yeah. So and I think it, that we a, felt at this time of the year it did not seem to be as much of an issue. They often didn't go out or didn't wish to go out. Right. Perhaps we can revisit it again in the spring and see if it's working with it being left up to teacher discretion. Right. It, it's, it's numbers, um, quality of play, and then you know, a third, but importantly, legal responsibilities, too. I, I believe three years ago it was, it was pretty bad. It, it's improving, but uh, um, there are always trade-offs. I, I guess... Just a fourth factor would be also the the need for. Uh, I have a son that, that that's at that level, and uh, you know I just uh, see a, a great value of just having a release of energy also right. sort of midway through the day. 
I do too. Um, it, it's something I can't really schedule. I've done one, and then I have to kind of rely on teachers to let me know when they're going to do it because it's it's almost impossible for the administrator to do with uh, all the variations in schedule. The teachers who have done it, um, and we've even talked about where to go, like the uh, inner courtyard. Uh, when I was publicly urging people to go out there, one of the teachers came to me and said, don't do that. I like that. I like going out there on my own. I don't want company. Um, another teacher goes down uh, at an approved time down to the lower field that the middle school usually uses. So I think we're just going to have to do that rather than have too many kids with not enough supervision on the playground. But I understand your point. I'm not trying to take it out on kids, but I think if we had waited too much longer, we were going to get uh, we're going to have a disaster in our hands on that playground. Tom, I just want to say I think this is a good solution, and it wasn't just that we cut ed techs from the budget. We right. have to just sort of slowly develop a way to get teacher planning time that doesn't just fill kids' time with inventing new allied arts or those kind of right. things. So it's really that balance, and we probably just have to go through this process of discovering what works for our school. And you know, as we look at that time study, I think um, that's going to happen. We'll hopefully get there and say, what do the teachers need and what do the kids need, and try to make it both mesh. But um, you know, what we had before wasn't right either. So. Right. And, and, and it's still, I mean, Cynthia will bear this out, it's still a dilemma for some teachers. I think the preference would be to have a professional take them away and have everything planned, but we can't do that all the time. And some teachers are very reluctant to give up their kids for even half an hour. Um, so, but the consensus, I mean, I think we're almost unanimous after the talk that this will work. Nothing's perfect. Uh, this will work. And we're going to revisit it again in uh, February before February vacation. So that would give us six weeks to, to try the plan and see how it's working. Yeah. And about the change thing, I read, you probably heard it too, only a, only a wet baby likes change. And, and that, that's where we are with some of this. <laughs> Are we near, <laughs> nearing the end here? <laughs> I'll make a motion that we approve the... Uh, uh, before we make a motion, is there anybody else who would like to comment or have any questions about this proposal? Okay, entertain a motion. I, th I think... Okay. Um, just very briefly, Barbara Powers, fourth grade, um, third grade, I'm sorry. I can't remember where I am year to year. Change. <laughs> Change, right. Um, just want to appreciate your revisiting this issue mid-year for us. We know that's not easy for our administration or board to come back to, but um, I think many of you listened very carefully as teachers have come to you and through negotiations and so forth to let you know of this need, and I just wanted to express our appreciation for that. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the uh, superintendent's um, proposal for a January 5th to June 18th uh, EdTech 1 and substitute. You don't need. EdTech 2, sorry. That's all you need for okay. the motion. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Um, dates to remember. Uh, school Board Policy Subcommittee meetings, Wednesday, January 14th, 1998 at 7.45 a.m. in the Council Chambers Conference Room. The Finance Subcommittee meeting, Tuesday, January 13th, 1998 at 6.30 in the Council Chambers Conference Room, followed by the regular school board meeting at 7.30. Okay, a consideration of the superintendent's recommendation to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing teacher negotiations, and we probably will be coming back out for a vote action in public here in public meeting. Entertain a motion. Charlie, I would move that. I just wonder if we should do the executive session for Claire Labrie first so she doesn't have to wait. No? No, no. because that's going to be much longer, I think, than oh, okay. negotiations. Thank you, anyway. So you entertain a motion? Sorry. I do. Then. Do I have a second? Second. George. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Yeah, we just clarify what that's all about.
board meeting has reconvened, and I entertain a motion. I'd like to uh, make the motion that we accept uh, the three-year contract uh, that has been negotiated uh, between the Teachers Association and the Cape Elizabeth School Board um, with uh, a clarification around the specification of the membership for the Athletic Steering Committee uh, to be included in a, in a uh, side letter and, and so secured. Um, you want to state the article number? Uh, and that is Article uh, 7, Section 3. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. I thank the negotiating team. I thank also the Teachers Association for a very productive and uh, I think uh, rewarding on both sides process. I entertain a motion to go into executive session the purpose of discussing a personnel issue. So moved. So second. All those in favor? 7-0.